17 again, Retrospective, Part 3, Y2K Fashion Trends. Old School Fashion 15 to 20 years after trends are popular, they seem to resurface because it's now seen as retro or old school. In the 90s, people replicated the 70s. In the 70s, people reverted to the 50s. Now people are going back to the 90s and 2000s. While it may not be old school to people who are old enough to remember it, it is to the next generation who admired the trends of the previous generation. In the past few years, popular phrases like Y2K fashion and the Y2K aesthetic have been trending on social media. Some of these trends are supposed to combine fashions that were popular from the mid 90s to the early 2000s. However, most pictures on social media reflect trends that were popular in the mid 2000s approximately 2003 to 2007. The term Y2K came into use around 1998. It was short for the year 2000 problem. As the 20th century came to a close, businesses relied more on technology. As a result, people feared that computers would shut the world down. Computer programmers speculated that computers would not effectively be able to read 2000s dates. They thought computers would read 00 as the year 1900 and it would cause a major crash and end the world. Clearly this wasn't true at all because we're all still here. The Fashion History Timeline writes, As the new decade and millennium dawned, fashion largely continued along the same trajectory that had started in the late 1990s. However, in the aftermath of the September 11, 2001 attacks, fashion returned to conservatism. With the rise of new technology, the fashion spread quickly, and celebrities played a key role in consumer choices as images were shared through the internet instantly. While popular styles changed over the years, one item remained ubiquitous throughout the decade, denim jeans. When watching other films from around this time, you'll see a more futuristic approach to fashion. While high fashion trends are often displayed in films and television shows, Seventeen again reflected a much more everyday look something that the average viewer would have worn around the time. Here are some year 2000 trends that were reflected in the movie. Clothes Around 2001, many fashion designers abandoned high-waisted pants. This was the last year they were produced on a large scale. Designers began creating low-cut pants. The pants shown in this clip are stonewashed jeans, which many people now call 80s and 90s jeans or mom jeans. Leggings, stockings, and slips were almost always worn underneath dresses and skirts, but started to see a decrease in popularity as fashion became less conservative and more seductive. People also tucked in shirts to make casual clothes appear more dressy. Many women's shirts were made out of crushed velvet and rib material. You can tangibly feel the difference between these fabrics. Women also wore long dresses and skirts, and skirts made out of denim. Long coats were in style because of sci-fi movies like The Matrix. People bought at least one dark long trench coat or leather coat. Leather coats and trench coats are always in style because they're classic. However, they hit peaks in certain periods. Turtlenecks, denim, khakis, cardigans, and leopard print would also be an example of that. The dress became more casual than it was in the 1980s and before due to the rise of grunge and hip-hop culture. Teens used to dress up for school, but by the 90s and 2000s, high schoolers wore a lot of athletic wear, graphic tees, and sports jerseys. By the mid-2000s, small trends like tying shirts and hoodies around the waist were no longer fashionable, but became popular again around 2013. At the time, many people over the age of 30 dressed up. Many 30-year-olds today don't dress up because they were raised in the 90s and 2000s with casual clothing. This is why you see the grandparents look more dressed up in the film to do ordinary activities. Grandpa's wearing a fedora hat, khakis, and a button-up shirt coming from the airport. Bubble coats were huge in the early to mid-2000s and before, but went out of style for about a decade. They resurfaced in the mid-2010s. For some reason, around 2006 to 2007, people started caring more about looking cool rather than staying warm during the winter months. We used hoodies instead of large coats and drawstring bags instead of regular backpacks. Men wore dress shoes such as loafers and oxfords, while a lot of women's shoes came in the form of blocked heels. 
kids and teens wore tennis shoes and sneakers, which in previous generations would have been seen as gym clothes. Because this was a family film, I think the costume designers wanted to keep the clothing G-rated. Other teen films at the time featured young people with a lot of sex appeal. However, Seventeen again does a good job of keeping fashion true to real life. Minimalism Minimalism refers to the lack of clutter, minimizing unnecessary details. It's not only used in fashion, but is used in lifestyle choices as well. This minimalist approach to fashion arose in the mid-1990s. Neutral colors, pastels, solid colors, and earth tones overtook the bright color trends of the 1980s and early 90s. Women wore slip dresses with spaghetti straps or crop top dresses. This is best seen in the Orange Room Teen Club sequence. Hair Braided hairstyles became popular in the mid-90s. These hairstyles included box braids and micro braids. Natural hair was still popular amongst girls and young women. At the time, wigs were reserved for older women, while hair extensions were worn from time to time instead of year-round, with the exception of celebrities. At the time, men wore long mustaches. Beards weren't as dominant as they were today. People had to shave, especially at corporate companies, for a more clean-cut look. Young men spiked their hair and dyed or bleached it with highlights and streaks. This became more popular with the rise of boy bands. Other popular haircuts for men included fades and buzz cuts. Large hair clips such as French barrettes and snap clips were used to pin the hair in place but were also used as accessories. Women used hair rollers to curl their hair at nighttime. Everyone remembers their mom, aunts, and grandmothers rolling sponge rollers or hard rollers before bed. Women used dark lipstick and eyeshadow colors such as black, purple, and brown. Women also wore less makeup than today. Large amounts of makeup were reserved for mature women and special events such as proms, weddings, dates, and luncheons. Teens especially were encouraged by parents to have a more natural look. It was more common for women to do their own hair and nails instead of getting them done every week by a professional. Subculture Bohemian styles were returned to the 1970s fashion. Music genres like Neo Soul took 1970s culture and added a modern appeal. These people tended to be more artsy and creative. The piercing and tattoo craze became more mainstream, which older generations didn't approve of. Gothic fashion and the emo look peaked in the 90s and 2000s and were often associated with dark, satanic devil worship. These people would have been considered outliers at the time. I could not have completed this video without researching certain terms, so I have to thank these sources listed on the screen. My name is Anthony Morton. Thank you all for watching this part of the 17 Again Retrospective. Stay tuned for more content.